No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search, I can search for all eternity long and find. So the theme is, are you fit for the kingdom of God? And so we are being encouraged to be an approved worker for God. This is the heading of the scripture in the New Living Translation. An approved worker of God. Are we fit for the kingdom? God wants to make us fit for his work and for his kingdom. And so, the writer, under the Holy Spirit's inspiration, encourages the believer to work hard. The writer encourages the believer to work hard and to put effort into the word, into the work of God. Now, God's work can sometimes be difficult and requires committed focus, committed, real commitment and a focus. It requires self-application and a firm pulling together for a team effort. So God himself says, listen, I want to see hard work out of you guys. I want to see some real effort out of you. Have you ever been doing anything and you've been just cruising along and coasting and somebody comes to you and says, come on, let's have some effort out here, come on, come on, what are you doing? Have you ever been there? <laughs> You're not telling the truth, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had to say some? have you ever had to say to someone, come on man, get it together, come on man, put it together man, come on, go for it, go. Have you ever had to give somebody that push? Yeah. Yeah. You ever had to be given a push now and again? Come on, tell the truth. We've all been there. We, we need a push now and again. And the Lord is doing the same here. Come on. Push on a little bit now. Push it. Do a little bit more than what you used to do. Do a bit different than what you used to do. Try something else. But work. Put that effort in. Now you notice that when we, um, we sometimes have hobbies, 
that we like, we sometimes have maybe we're in a certain type of job and we love it and we um, we have a, uh, some things that we enjoy doing and it's like we're producing it, there's effort there there's work you know, and we delight in doing it and it's like the hard work ain't really that much because we like what we're doing but the Lord is encouraging us, delight in his work delight in his work but put that effort in to get the work done. I just want to say for those online who have joined us, we thank you so much that you've joined us. We want you to know that if you're watching us online, that we are a church that believes in the word of prophecy. And we believe that God speaks specially into the church to help to lead and guide the church. So if you're online and you're watching, we just want to let you know that we believe in the spirit of God and hearing from him. And that one of the ways that the Lord speaks to the church is through the gift of prophecy. And the Lord, we believe the Lord prophesies to this church and is leading the church by His grace and by His Spirit. So if you're online and you're watching, may God bless you and may you also receive the Word of God into your heart. So may you begin to grow and understand the gifts that God brings into the church and one of those gifts, very important gifts, is the gift of prophecy. Okay, so there are many times the people of God have to be prepared to work hard together. And we also have to understand that this means obedience to the word of God. We're, we're encouraged to put effort into the right areas of obedience. We are encouraged to put hard work into the correct areas of obedience. Because we can be doing things that we like. We can be doing things that are very good. We can do, be doing things that are very impressive. But we have to ask ourselves, is this what the Lord would have me to do? Have you to do? Because the, your area of obedience is critical to the success of the work. You and I cannot be doing any and everything just because we enjoy it. It's what we want to do. Now, apart from the work of God, there are other things that we can do. And we should be doing we need to be enjoying ourselves. We need to be having lighter times. We need to be having good times. We need to be enjoying the company of us. So many things that we can do. There's many hobbies that we can have. And they need time. We do have to give time to other things. But it's encouraging us for the right, the hard work and effort in the right areas of obedience. Is that clear? Very quiet. Is that clear? Amen. Can I have an amen? amen? Can I have an amen? amen? Okay. So we have to work hard in the right areas of obedience. And we are encouraged, again, to be good workers. Who, who do not need to be ashamed. Verse 15, the second part of verse 15. We are encouraged to be good workers and to work hard so we can present ourselves as an approved worker to God. So it reads, be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. So we need to be good workers. And it's also suggesting here in the second part of verse 15, apart from being a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. That is so important. We correctly explain the word of truth. And as I say, when you start out in the word of God and you start out in your Christianity, you're not clear about a lot of things. A lot of things you're not sure about. And sometimes people will come to you looking for answers. But sometimes you're not sure, so you tell them the best you can. That's fair enough. But as time goes on, and as you understand the word, and as you mature in the word, things become clearer. You become spiritually clearer. You become clear in your understanding. 
and then you begin to understand the serious truths of the word of God. So therefore you can explain it more clearly and confidently and accurately. Very important. So we can present ourselves to God approved correctly, not being ashamed, but correctly explaining the word of truth. And we are also good. Now this is all a part of being fit for the work. Fit for the kingdom. And it doesn't happen straight away. It takes time. The word of God is serious business. It really is. It's serious business like anything else. And it can be hard work. But we have to take time to grow into it and understand it. And I say, you know, when we all when we first come to the Lord and we're on fire, we're praising and we're worshiping, there's a lot going on. But we have to settle down, allow ourselves to grow and mature. <coughs> mature believers. I believe this is what God wants for the church, for us to continue to grow and to be mature believers and workers, fit for the work, fit for the kingdom. And here are some more instructions. In verse uh, 16 and 17. And this happens so often, especially when we sometimes go out into the street to talk to people. We can get involved in all sorts of conversations that aren't going anywhere. And unfortunately, sometimes some of them are good Christians as well. They're good people. But we end up talking, 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 talking. talking. And before you know it, time is gone. And you could have been more productive with the time. So it says here, avoid worthless, foolish talk. Avoid it. It doesn't necessarily have to be foolish talk, but avoid wasting time in certain conversations. But I also believe this um, scripture encourages us to be wise with the word of God. Be wise and be accurate with the word of God. And let us remember, as we give our best to the work, let us not forget that God gave his very best for us. God gave his very best for you, and God gave his very best for me. So let us be encouraged to continue to give our best to his work. Okay, so it says, avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. This kind of talk spreads like cancer, as in the case of Hymenaeus and Philetius. They have left the path of truth, claiming that the resurrection of the dead has already occurred. In this way, they have turned some people away from the faith. So again, let us not get in conversation that leads to no real conclusion. Or foolish talk that leads or encourages people to bad behavior. So we see in verse 17 and 18 that Hymenaeus and Philetius who turned away from the faith were claiming the resurrection of the dead had already taken place. And Paul was condemning them because they were possibly believing that because of the resurrection you can continue to live how you want because your sin has already been dealt with, your sin has already been taken away. So it doesn't matter too much. I mean, the resurrection has already done a God. This is just one of the possible things that these two people were believing. And they were causing others to be turned away from the faith. So one of the things we have to be careful is careful of is that people will use the truths in the word of God and twist them and turn them into something else. So you can just be comfortable in doing what you want. But that's not what should be happening. We really have to take the word of God seriously and it will challenge our lives, it will challenge sin, it will challenge, challenge those things that need to be dealt with. And yes, sin, God will deal with it in our lives. He will help us to grow out of it. He will help us to grow through it and move past it. So it's very important that we um, do not allow the word of God and the truths of God to be hard, become half truths, manipulated and twisted. And if you're not sure, you come back to the word of God. 
Always come back to the word of God. Always come back to reading and try and understand, it, understand what's in front of you. Being accurate with the word of God. Okay, so being a soldier and being fit for the kingdom means we sometimes have to develop also endurance to many different challenges to our faith and our lifestyle and conduct. So God's word will challenge everything and everyone. As regards to your faith, your lifestyle and the way you're living and conducting your daily life. And this will include resisting all kinds of situations as we begin to grow in Jesus Christ. So let's do our best to stay fit for the kingdom of God. Soldiers keep themselves fit, ready and sharp, always prepared for any possibilities. And so it is with the church, so it is with the gospel, staying ready for any possibility that may arise. The Bible goes on to say, God's truth is a solid foundation. He knows all things. And we must turn away from all forms of evil. Verse 19, God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. And again, verse 20 and 21 reminds the believer that there is a distinct difference between special use and common everyday use. And I believe God's hope for us is to grow past the common everyday use into special use for honorable, impacting, effective, result-producing purposes. That sounds nice off the tongue. Can I repeat that again? <laughs> Verse 20 and 21 reminds the believer there is a distinct difference between special use, common everyday use, which there's nothing wrong with, but I believe God's hope for us is to grow past common everyday use into special use for honorable, impacting, effective, result producing purposes. So, Again, in verse 20, 21 and 22, it tells us exactly how and what these things are that will keep us spiritually fit. So if we go to the end of verse 21 into verse 22, I'll just read the two verses. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean. And you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. <coughs> very encouraging. Very enlightening. We have to keep ourselves pure. Now just give me a, a little moment on this. Keeping ourselves pure. Now that can be very difficult. Because it says... Yeah, in keeping ourselves pure. So we have to try and avoid things that we know are pleasurable but influence us. That could be anything. Certain type of conversation. We see immorality is rife. We see um, arrogance and pride and really bad conversation. All sorts of things. But we're encouraged as God's people. Listen, stay away from those things. Try and cut those things down. So we have to try and keep your minds pure. That's very serious. Try and keep your hearts and minds out of the rubbish and the filth that's going off. Now the Spirit of God is with us and I believe there's a certain level of guarding and protecting that we have when we're in certain environments. And I believe that the Lord is with us and He helps us not to be agreeing and, and, and jumping in and being a part of that type of mentality and attitude because we're the people of God. Because I think there's a whole subject here. <laughs> there's a whole topic here that could, we could be um, talking about. Keeping ourselves pure. We see the nonsense going off in the world. But we are encouraged by the Lord. Do your best to keep yourself clean and pure. And that means you have to be, you know, Examining what you're watching on the TV. 
You really do. And you have to be examining some of the things that you may be reading or the books that you may be reading. Is this the right type of thing for you to be reading? And it seems, it does seem straight. And I used to say that myself. Some things, when you look at the Word of God, taken seriously, seem straight. But if we're being called to a higher level, aren't the best athletes, aren't those with the most discipline, aren't those at the top of their game in whatever area of work, aren't they strict? Aren't they disciplined? For what for their task? Don't they come don't they compete according to the rules and the laws of whatever their game or task is? But what about the people of God? If we to go to a level to have a certain kind of impact, can we be just like everybody else? Can we be just like the average? I'm not judging. But just like the average Christian, can we continue just coasting and cruising, happy, okay, comfortable? But to stay clean and pure is sometimes a real effort. But this is what the word is saying. This is what, not me, <laughs> I've had to learn this just like you. So if we are to be used for honorable use, it says, if you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. You will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. That's serious. That's big. The people of the world take their game seriously. They take their businesses seriously. They take their football team seriously. They take their sporting game seriously. They take it really seriously. It means it means a lot to them. For them to be at the top of their game. <clears throat> so clean. We will be ready for the master to use for every every good work. Every good work. Everybody's been given a good work to do. Again, the prophecy has told us we've been given. The whole church has something to do. So we have to keep ourselves pure and clean. And not polluted and going, going along with the ways of the world. So we grow past common everyday use into special use for having a real impact for the kingdom. Okay, so we're just going to go back to the end of verse 22. So if we keep our lives pure and we do our best to, it's a part of us keeping fit for the kingdom of God. Whatever stage of life you are in, run from things that stimulate youthful lust. Man, there's a topic there as well. Run from youthful lust. You know when you're young, <clears throat> you know when you're young I always say this you think you're fantastic <laughs> I used to think I was something fantastic again Jesus knocked that rubbish out of you he knocks all that foolish pride and nonsense out of you now whatever stage of life you're in run from things that stimulate that's why you have to be careful you're not too long and too long into certain type of conversation. You're not too long looking at certain things, reading certain things that you know, even though if it brings enjoyment, according to the word of God, it's like a poison in your heart. A poison. And it leads you astray. <coughs> so you are encouraged. But listen, I'm not telling you anything from my soul. But the word of God says, run. Certain, if you want to stay pure, you have to just stay away from certain things that stimulates the sinful, youthful lust within. And sometimes as you're growing up, you know, you, you look at certain things in life and you, you put a lot of value on them. And the things that you shouldn't put your value on when you're younger, you don't. And when you get older, you begin to realize the things that you put so much importance on aren't really that important at all. So we have to, for the kingdom, 
run from things that stimulate you for loss, and instead pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Look at that. Instead pursue. Instead pursue. Instead make an effort. Instead pursue. Righteous living, pursue it. See what it's about. Look after it. Follow in it. That's the way you ought to be going. We are the people of God. And then, faithfulness, love, and peace. Faithfulness. Be faithful in your dealings with people. Be faithful to them. And pursue love and kindness. And pursue peace. Pursue peace. If there's anything that people need in this life now, it's peace. So much turmoil. So much turmoil. You need the word of God. You need to fight to get into the word of God. Because it's the word of God that helps you with your peace. It doesn't just happen. But it helps you with your peace. And so, again, very important. The church is important. The people of God are very important. Being a part of a fellowship as part of your development and growth is very important. Yes, we have to get out of the church and do other things. Very important we get out. And we've been told through the, 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 the words of prophecy, we need to get out of our churches and really bring the word into the community. But it's important that we fellowship together it's important we grow together and stimulate one another to righteous living to keep us fit for the work when we go out. So we enjoy the companionship of those who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. Look and see who's serious about the Lord. Look and see who means business and stay around them. Talk to them, converse with them, fellowship with them. Very important because that's how we're going to grow. Enjoy people's companionship and those who call upon the Lord in a serious manner and take the Lord very seriously. And I believe that's where our real joy is going to come from. Our real hope is going to come from. Our real peace is going to come from. Our stability in Christ is going to come from. So let us continue to go on look to the Lord Jesus Christ and let's enjoy the companionship of each other we help each other to grow our gifts and abilities our personalities our, our there's something about us that helps each other to grow and that's what is encouraged here so let us continue to go on let us continue to try and be fit for the work fit for the kingdom and fit for each other as we journey on in the Lord may God bless you as we go on and aim to be fit for the kingdom of the Lord. Okay.